In the 26th century, a group of alien races come together to form a military alliance called the Covenant. They think that the superweapon ring world known as Halo will provide a path to salvation and declare humanity an affront to their gods, kicking off a genocidal campaign to kill all humans. In 2552, in the human colony Madrigal, Quan and her friends wander around the woods to look for a plant to get wasted. Suddenly Quan hears a noise and leaves the group behind to investigate, only to discover a ship has landed nearby and there are lights blazing inside a cavern. Terrified, she rushes to her friends to alert them to get back, but the enemy gets the first and starts killing them. The group begins running away as fast as they can considering their current condition but fire keeps coming around them, killing them one by one. Quan manages to hide and shoot a flare to alert the people at the insurrectionist outpost, who immediately rush to their defensive positions and get ready to fight. Then Quan keeps on running and enters the outpost right before it closes. She tells her father that the attackers aren't the usual marines, but he doesn't listen and sends her to hide with the other civilians as the enemy reaches the outpost and opens fire. The front gate is blown up and a bunch of aliens come in to start killing everyone in sight, not even batting an eye at humans' primitive weapons. Humans are dying all over the outpost and Quan can't watch any longer, so she gets out to look for her father. This saves her life because an alien soon opens the shelter door and shoots everyone inside. At that moment a ship flies over and drops the Spartans, an army of genetically engineered super soldiers. The Spartans immediately begin fighting the aliens with their advanced armor and weaponry, proving to be vastly superior. Quan continues to run around dodging explosions and tries hiding inside a trailer, but an alien finds her anyway. Luckily Master Chief quickly shoots the alien from afar. Once the remaining aliens are cornered together, the Spartans shoot them in one go, finishing the fight. Quan gets ready to reunite with her father, but suddenly an alien reveals it's still alive and goes after her. Her dad immediately comes to her rescue, but the alien kills him with a blade. Master Chief quickly jumps in to kill the alien before making a report. 20 elite alien warriors and 150 civilians were killed, leaving Quan as the only survivor. Afterward the Spartans leave to look for the enemy ship. Quan grieves for her father but when she realizes she's been left alone, she decides to follow them. The Spartans enter the cave Quan saw earlier, unaware that an alien is following them, and they discover the Covenant was there to excavate something. Master Chief finds a relic the aliens left on a wall and when he touches it, the whole cave lights up and he has a vision of a family having a picnic while a white dog runs around. At that moment the chief's partner pulls him off the relic and the illusion ends. Suddenly they see the remaining alien running off and go after it, but the alien turns invisible and sneaks out unseen. The alien makes it outside in seconds and runs through Quan, knocking her out before reaching its ship and taking off. Later at the UNSC or United Nations Space Command, Dr. Halsey convinces her boss Admiral Parangaski to let her study the relic instead of putting it away. On her way out, Parangaski notices that Halsey is still working on a project that was supposed to be on pause and tells her to get rid of it. Halsey enters a room to reveal a capsule with a strange body inside, but she hesitates to terminate it. Meanwhile in the Covenant Command Center, the Hierarch visits Makey, the only human in their ranks that they raised as the Blessed One. She predicted the location of the relic, and she's shocked to hear someone else beside her could activate it. Back to Quan, she wakes up and panics when she discovers she's in the Spartan ship. A hologram of Dr. Miranda appears to ask Quan for a favor, she wants her to record a video telling the other colonies about the threat of the Covenant, that way they'll stop fighting the UNSC and instead all humans can fight the aliens together. However after spending all her life fighting the government's propaganda, Quan refuses to be part of it unless they accept to pay her with freedom for her colony. Afterward Master Chief feeds Quan and learns that they've met before, it was him who killed her mother. The conversation is interrupted when he gets a message telling him Quan must be eliminated, and he's so upset that he decides to cut off the security cameras. At the base, Parangaski is furious, so Halsey explains that the relic seems to have given Master Chief his memories and feelings back. To get things under control, she drops the oxygen to zero in the ship to kill Quan but only 40% in Master Chief's suit. This is enough for him to keep moving and open the panels in the ship, allowing Quan to survive. Parangaski won't accept any more insubordination and orders the Marines to blow up the ship when it comes closer. On the ship, Quan grabs a weapon and threatens Master Chief, thinking he's the one who tried to kill her. To gain her trust, he removes his helmet and shows his face, revealing his name is John. Quan agrees to work together and shoots the ship's AI to change it to manual mode so John can pilot it away, but sadly a cannon hits them first and the ship falls to the ground. Seeing all the soldiers coming after them, John decides to touch the relic again. The vision shows him his family and his younger self drawing the relic. At that moment, the relic sends a wave of energy across the base, causing it to lose all power and disabling all weapons. However the ship gets extra power, so John and Quan fly away to escape. Then a flashback shows John 22 years earlier when he was still in training. He sneaks out in the middle of the night and meets with Soren, who is shocked when his friend suddenly pulls a gun on him. John doesn't want to escape anymore and reminds Soren they must respect the rules, but Soren talks about following their dreams and how this place brainwashes them. He also reminds John that he lost his arm because of the experiments. John decides to give him 5 minutes to escape, but still refuses to go. 
Back in the present, Quan is shocked to see a glow around the ship and John explains they're using a special travel method called slipspace. Eventually they end up in the middle of an asteroid field, so John uses fast reflexes to pilot around them and avoid any damage. Once they leave the asteroid field, they find a hidden space station known as the Rubble, which leaves outside the law. The locals immediately draw their weapons and try to block John's way with a vehicle, but he just moves it away. At that moment the leader of the station tells them to lower their weapons. It turns out to be an older Soren, who welcomes John warmly and informs him there's a bounty on Quan's head. Meanwhile the UNSC has a special meeting to discuss the situation. They want John to be terminated, but Halsey goes against Paranguski's wishes and reveals she has a new program called Cortana. It is the next stage of human evolution and can overwrite the Spartan's consciousness to replace it with an AI, making them more controllable. Under the pressure of their higher-ups, Paranguski has no choice but to approve a test trial of Cortana. Back in Madrigal, politician Graf kills all the rebels that had any ties to Quan's father. When a drone passes by, he shoots it too, so Quan can't spy on him anymore. Later, she and John show Soren the relic, but when Soren touches it nothing happens. He decides to introduce them to Reth, a hermit who was once held captive by the Covenant. When he sees the relic, he recognizes it as an important object for the Covenant's religion and explains they're searching the galaxy for more pieces. When he touches it nothing happens because only the blessed ones can activate it, so he throws it at John, who catches it with his hand. The relic immediately glows in the shape of a ring and shoots an energy wave, causing John to have another flashback during which he sees his mother's dead body. When John snaps out of it, Reth screams that the ring is Halo, the superweapon the aliens want to end humanity. Reth thinks John must destroy the relic and die to save them all. Disturbed by the revelation, John decides he needs the UNSC's help to deal with this dangerous weapon, so he asks Soren to take care of Quan and then leaves on a ship. Moments later, he makes it to the base and is immediately arrested while Halsey takes the relic to study. Then another flashback shows Planet Oban, a human colony dedicated to waste salvaging. While everyone works, two children hide to read a story together. They see the characters sharing a kiss and decide to try it, but they're interrupted by the guards, who chase them until they catch the boy and beat him to death. They start hurting the girl too, but at that moment some aliens from the Covenant arrive. After pushing the guard away, they take the girl with them. In the present, that girl has become Makey, and she informs the Covenant hierarchs that she'll go looking for the relic and John herself. Back to Halsey, she finally awakens the body she kept hidden in the lab, which is a clone of herself. After they share a very existential conversation to confirm the clone's brain is in good condition, Halsey brings John to the lab and convinces him to go through a special procedure so he can return to the battlefield. Next they insert a needle into the clone's eye to extract her brain, which is then implanted in John's head while the clone is vaporized. Once the procedure is over, Cortana finally appears as a hologram representing the AI. Her future mission is to fully integrate herself into John to optimize his physical and mental performance, but for the moment, Halsey has limited her access because first she wants to use him to test the relic. When John wakes up, he doesn't like the idea of a voice in his head very much, but they still proceed to test the relic. As soon as John touches it, it activates and shows him more memories of his childhood, but while he's connected like that Cortana can't access his visions. Later, John tries to search the database for the place of his memories and Cortana tries to guide him, but none of the names awaken feelings in him as the relic does. Cortana reminds him that his emotional regulator stops him from feeling things, so John decides to remove it. When Cortana tries to warn Halsey of this, the doctor tells Cortana to guide John so he can see her as a friend and not a spy. Following Cortana's instructions, John successfully removes the regulator with a knife, unaware that his teammate Kai is secretly watching him. Afterward John goes for a walk to experience the world and art with actual feelings for a change. Seeing a dog reminds him of the relic so he rushes back to the base to touch it again, and this time he sees his child self drawing the relic over and over, which made his father angry. He also drew a second artifact, saying both relics went together. His father made him bury something, and when John returns to the present, he's desperate to find it. He remembers seeing ice rings around his planet and Cortana finds in the database that he comes from Aridinus II, which became uninhabited after a cargo ship carried in a virus that swept through the population. When Halsey finds him, he tells her everything and they agree to travel together to Aridinus II for answers. Meanwhile a patrol ship watches a Covenant Starcraft appear near them, but to their shock it doesn't attack. They establish communications and a desperate woman asks for help, saying she escaped her planet when it was attacked by the Covenant. A group of soldiers boards the ship to rescue her, but she turns out to be Makey, who releases an ambush of alien worms that immediately begin killing all the soldiers. She approaches the leader to interrogate him, but he refuses to talk so she kills him with a weapon in her nail. The soldier's ship has nothing useful, so Makey decides she'll go to Madrigal. In Rubble, Quan sees on the news that Grath is taking over her home planet so she asks Soren to let her go and fight, but Soren refuses. Later Soren finds Quan trying to steal one of his ships, so she makes a new offer, if he takes her back to Madrigal, she'll pay him generously with her family's money. Soren accepts and they leave on his ship. 
Back at the base, Kai decides to follow John's example and also removes her emotional regulator. Already feeling different, she also chooses to dye her hair. Afterward, Kai and the rest of John's team are called by Miranda, who wants to test the relic while Halsey is gone. However no matter who touches it, nothing happens. Eventually Halsey and John make it to Eridanus 2 and find his childhood home. John immediately starts digging, only to find a box with his drawings. Then he goes inside the house and asks Cortana to use his memories to recreate what this place used to look like. As he walks around, more and more memories come back to him. He sees his child self drawing a lot and finding a huge metallic structure. The drawing depicted an underground cavern that little John entered with his dog. There, the kid touched something on the wall and caused the cavern to start shaking, so he ran away. The next vision showed Halsey coming to see John. Back in the present, John asks Halsey why she was there, but she says trauma probably muddled his memories. Then John announces he's remembered where the second object is. They drive to the desert and enter the old cavern, where they find the other relic stuck on a wall. In the meantime, Soren and Quan make it to Madrigal, where they find wanted posters for her head. They attend her father's memorial and Quan talks to her dad's second in command, only to learn that the revolution is over. People are scared, so they just follow Graf's lead. Quan freaks out and calls everyone cowards, which gets the attention of the guards. Quan freaks out and calls everyone cowards, which gets the attention of the guards. But unfortunately it's already been taken over by the guards. Quan convinces Soren to help her find her aunt, who will have the money to buy back his ship. While they're crossing the market, the duo is attacked by the locals, but Soren immediately defends himself and starts beating them down. Before things can escalate, Quan's aunt reveals herself, so Quan stays with her while Soren leaves to check on his ship. Unfortunately a merchant informs him the ship has already been scrapped for parts, so Soren steals his bike instead. Back to Quan, she learns from her aunt that there's no more money because her father spent it all on the revolution. The aunt says her dad died for a lie and shares a story. Years ago before the war, her dad visited a group in the desert called the Mystics. When he came back, his behavior was different and he was sure his purpose was to free Madrigal. The conversation is suddenly interrupted by an assassin sent by Graf, who quickly kills the aunt. Before she can kill Quan too, Soren arrives and opens fire, but the wounded assassin escapes by jumping through the window. Soren drags Quan out only to find guards opening fire on them, but the duo gets on the bike and goes away at great speed. Eventually they Soren reach the desert, but the bike breaks down. Soren handcuffs Quan to the bike and leaves to look for an alternative. However Quan uses a rock to hit the bike and manages to break free. Later when Soren comes back in a jeep, he finds the bike alone. Suddenly Quan reveals she's hiding under the sand and surprises him from behind to knock him out. Then another flashback shows a younger Halsey taking a tour of a special school installation in Eridanus 2. She saw a young John save a kid from falling by simply grabbing him by his ankle, which was very impressive. It's then revealed that her husband was Captain Jacob, meaning Miranda is their daughter. In the present day, Miranda arrives at Eridanus 2, where Halsey is setting up a base to work on getting the relic from the rock. Jacob takes her to the cavern, where Halsey is asking John to stay far from this relic because it's much more powerful than the first one. He leaves the cavern and discovers how changed Kai is, immediately guessing what she did. Kai doesn't regret it, but John says she isn't fit for battle and grounds her. Later, the team tries to penetrate the rock with a laser, but this causes a sound wave that makes everyone run away in unbearable pain. This wave is so strong that it reaches Meiki, who is in the Madrigal Caves. She announces she now knows the location of the second relic. Back in the cavern, the protective barrier around the second relic finally breaks. While everyone is getting ready to transport the relic, John ignores Halsey's orders and touches it, allowing him to see a memory of Halsey kidnapping him from his home to take him to the Spartan program. Halsey hears John scream and comes to check on him, so he takes the chance to demand answers. When Halsey says they can talk later after retrieving the relic, a furious John tries to attack her, so Cortana shuts down his neural bridge to knock him out. When John wakes up, he discovers they're under attack from a Covenant spacecraft, which quickly opens fire and makes the team lose their best ship. They'll have to use Miranda's ship instead, and as the scientists evacuate, Miranda and Halsey run to avoid the explosions and help them get into the ship. The Spartans go out to fight the aliens, who are now invading the camp. A vicious battle begins with both sides using all kinds of advanced technology and losing lots of people in the process. Seeing all this death causes Kai to freeze, which makes her an easy target for the Covenant. John wants to save her, so he jumps on the alien vehicle to make it crash. Then he proceeds to fight the aliens face to face, beating them up with uncharacteristic fury. Because John is distracted by this, an alien manages to reach the relic and the main Covenant ship takes it away. Before they leave, they drop Meiki on the ground, where she pretends to be a released hostage. Afterward, Kai and Meiki are taken to the infirmary, and John decides to lock Halsey up in a lab. Then he activates the decontamination system, which should dose Halsey with a lot of radiation. As the doctor begs for her life, John tells Cortana to stop this, but she can't override the system. At the last second, John frees Hasley and reveals it was all a test to know Cortana's limits. 
Later, Mickey tells the doctors that she was kidnapped as a child by the Covenant, but refuses to say more unless she gets to talk to John. The higher-ups allow John to see Mickey, who explains the Covenant wants the second relic and that they're hiding the first one in the Aspero star system. John wants to know why he should trust her, so Mickey explains she's a blessed one just like him. This upsets John so much that he leaves the room. While Jacob makes his team start tracking down the Aspero system, which has never been explored before, Paranguski makes Halsey offer a full report on Cortana and the clones, hoping to make her the scapegoat. John arrives and takes over the interrogation, which Paranguski allows as long as it makes her talk. Halsey explains that she created the Spartan program to protect humanity, but the augmentations needed children to work. Since no parent would ever approve of that, she kidnapped the kids and replaced them with clones that eventually died from an undiagnosed seizure disorder. Halsey pretends only she knows this to protect Jacob and Paranguski, but the conversation is also overheard by Miranda, who now considers her mother a monster. A furious John leaves the room and asks Miranda to confirm if Mickey can truly interact with the relic, he also tells Cortana he'll try to get rid of her. Then he visits Kai to share the truth with her and tells her to get better because he'll need her. Meanwhile Halsey goes to see Paranguski, who informs her she's off the project and Miranda will take over her job before making the guards kick her out. While Miranda starts testing Mickey, John starts to feel anxious and runs away to ask the computer for a health check. Suddenly he has a vision of Quan which disappears when the computer announces John needs to see a doctor urgently. Later when Miranda tries to take over her mother's lab, the computer denies her access and only shows a message from Halsey asking her to meet. Miranda goes to see her and calls her a monster, so Halsey apologizes for having been an absent mother. This shocks Miranda so much that she leaves without a word, but then it's revealed that Halsey had been acting. She used a special contact lens to get a copy of Miranda's retina and regain access to the Spartan program. When Miranda returns to the lab, she has access to the computer and the test results reveal that John and Mickey share unique genetic codes, making them two in a billion. Then John rushes to see Mickey, saying they've found nothing in the location she mentioned. John starts losing his mind and Mickey explains touching the relic has made him sick. The Covenant had other less powerful stones that used to make her sick too, but after lots of training she learned to control them and the stones became her servants. If John lets her access the relic, she can help him achieve peace. While Halsey secretly regains access to Cortana, John convinces Miranda to let him touch the relic again to test Mickey's words. In her room, Mickey can sense something bad is going to happen and knocks down her guard. However when John touches the relic, both he and Mickey start having a seizure. John's mind is flooded with disturbing memories until suddenly he finds himself on a mountain field with Mickey, and the doctors see that their vitals are perfectly synchronized. John notices they're inside the halo ring, but when he touches Mickey, the vision ends. Back in Madrigal, Quan is crossing the desert on the jeep while remembering her family. Eventually she comes across a sandstorm but she still keeps going until she sees a strange shadow. She leaves the vehicle to make contact, only to suddenly be knocked out. When she wakes up, she finds herself among the mystics and meets the leader Desiderata, who refuses to show her what her father saw because she isn't ready. However Quan changes her mind when she shares everything she went through to be here. Desiderata explains Quan's ancestor discovered a fuel in the desert that now sustains the planet and made him meet a strange being that told him his true purpose. Then Desiderata grabs a flame from this fuel and puts it in a bowl where it becomes water for Quan to drink. Suddenly Quan's reality gets altered and she appears back in John's ship with him. They land in the middle of the desert and return to the mystic camp, where Reth welcomes them and announces the start of the fight. To Quan's shock, she has to fight John himself. She tries the best she can, but obviously John easily kills her, however this is a vision and her life just gets reset so she can try again. Quan tries the fight over and over with different weapons, but the result is always the same. Eventually she falls to her knees and asks him what he wants, causing John to remove his helmet and offer his hand. Then John takes her to the desert, where she sees a being going through the forms of all her ancestors until it becomes her father. He apologizes for everything and reveals there's a special portal here powered by the soil of Madrigal, so it's Quan's duty to protect it. When Quan wakes up, she accepts her role as the new protector and takes the jeep back to the outpost, where she visits her old home. After taking some old letters about the portal, she hears a weird noise, it's Soren, who has come back because he promised John he would protect her. At that moment, Grath and his men surround the outpost, but Quan has a plan, they can use a tunnel to turn on the hydrogen station and kill them all while the two of them hide in the bunker. Unfortunately the pipe must be opened manually, so Quan goes down a secret tunnel while Soren keeps the enemy distracted with open fire before sneaking around to kill the soldiers face to face. Quan reaches the tunnel only to be found by a soldier, so they start fighting and she gets saved by Soren who shoots the guy. Then they split to reach the bunker, and while Soren continues to kill guys, Quan creates a distraction with an alien grenade. Suddenly Grath manages to shoot down Soren and threatens to kill him if Quan doesn't come out, however she finds a Spartan weapon and uses it to shoot the pipe and create a huge explosion. Soren and Quan manage to enter the bunker right before the flames can reach them, but their enemies are nothing but dust now. After the rain clears away the flames, Soren says goodbye to Quan, who pays him with some money she's found in the outpost. 
Sometime later, Halsey and Cortana notice that John's health has improved since he connected with Makey. John takes Makey out for a walk and Makey explains the Covenant wants the halo because of a prophecy that says those who are worthy will become gods in the ring. John wants to know what will happen to those who aren't worthy and is disturbed to hear they'll be cleansed. Their conversation is interrupted when soldiers take John back to the base, where they're watching reports of all the cities the Covenant has taken down. 11 million people have been killed, so Parangaski says they can't just wait for the Covenant to come to them anymore. John agrees and asks for permission to let Makey use the relic so they can find the second one and therefore the Covenant base. Afterward, John visits Makey to bring her the news. Makey thanks him with a kiss and they end up getting frisky in her bed while Cortana watches. Later after John has fallen asleep, Makey decides it's better here than with the Covenant, so she removes her nail with a hidden weapon. The next morning, Jacob informs Hasley that Parangaski wants her off the planet before noon. After he leaves, Halsey uses the special lens and accesses the system to contact Makey. She explains the UNSC shouldn't have access to the relics and Halo because humanity will use them to destroy themselves, she also believes Makey and John are being used by the government. Halsey swears she's the only one who can help, so she wants Makey to convince John to steal the relic and bring it to her. However when Halsey mentions awakening humanity's true potential, Makey remembers the Covenant speech about becoming gods and hangs up. Refusing to give up, Halsey contacts John's team and after saying the chain of command has been corrupted, she invokes said protocol, meaning the Spartans go offline and only get orders from her. She tells them John is unwell and can't be trusted, so they must grab him, Makey, and the relic and bring them to her ship. Kai doesn't like the sound of any of this, so Halsey orders the other Spartans to knock her out and leave her handcuffed. At the base, Miranda finishes analyzing an alien audio she got from the ship Makey attacked ages ago and discovers it's Makey's voice. Her comms aren't working because of Halsey's tricks, so she must run to warn the others. John picks Makey up to go see the relic while the Spartans wait for them at the end of the corridor to attack, however Cortana has grown fond of John and chooses to warn him of the trap while disconnecting Halsey from the system. After sending Makey away, John comes forward and fights his teammates, managing to offer a fair challenge even though he isn't wearing his armor. Soon Kai manages to free herself and joins the battle, fighting on John's side. Meanwhile Makey rushes to the relic room to tell Jacob and Parangaski what happened, but they're interrupted by Miranda, who tells them Makey is the enemy. The guards immediately knock her down and begin burning her with their weapons, so Makey remembers the guys who hurt her as a kid and reaches out to touch the relic for revenge. Activating the relic knocks down the Spartans and the guards while Makey and John appear on the ring. Makey says goodbye to him before disappearing. When a dizzy John wakes up, he discovers the entire base has been under attack. Miranda informs him that Makey left with the relic so he rushes to find her, only to find his way blocked by a Spartan threatening to shoot Kai. John starts explaining that Halsey kidnapped and brainwashed them all, but the Spartans don't believe him until Jacob shows up and confirms the story, admitting he helped his wife. Miranda hears this and is disgusted by him too. The Spartans agree to help John find Makey while Kai goes after Halsey. Unfortunately Makey has already left on a spacecraft, but Halsey is still close enough for Kai to jump on her ship and break through the roof. Halsey's assistant hits her from behind, but Kai immediately kills him while Halsey uses the distraction to escape on the emergency pod. Then the ship crashes near the base, but luckily Kai survives thanks to her armor. Afterward, John remembers the Covenant's prophecy and realizes it's a clue. Using Cortana, he searches for a planet that looks like shards of glass and finally finds it, revealing that a trick of light usually keeps it hidden from human eyes. While the Spartan team leaves to recover the relic, Jacob's men find Halsey and bring her back to the base, where she'll be executed. However Halsey has a seizure and starts bleeding from her nose, which means she's actually a clone and the real Halsey escaped. Makey returns to the Covenant and delivers the relics, which will allow the Hierarchs to start the Great Journey. She asks them to take her with them and they accept, however in private they discuss how they'll kill her after she activates the relics. Meanwhile John tries his best to pilot the ship through the new star system, but the ship starts malfunctioning and one room catches on fire. Kai immediately puts it off while John refuses to stop, and after lots of shaking through space, they finally reach their location safely. The team descends on the planet and easily takes down the guards without triggering an alarm because all the aliens are in the temple. When the two relics are put together, John and Makey immediately feel each other's presence. John begins feeling dizzy and falls out of his hiding spot, allowing the enemy to see him. The hierarchs think Makey brought them here and release a huge army of Sanghaili warriors. A vicious battle begins between the Spartans and the Sanghaili. The humans manage to bring down quite a number of aliens, especially John, who defeats a bunch of enemies before going after its leader. Unfortunately the alien is too strong and soon overpowers him, slowly cracking his helmet. Makey sees this and rushes back to the relic, touching it to release a wave that hits most of the alien warriors and pushes them off a cliff. Then the relic shoots a light beam into the sky, revealing the location of Halo. While the aliens kneel to the site, John approaches Makey, only to suddenly appear in the vision of the Halo ring. While he tries to convince Makey that this isn't real and they need to leave, the other Spartans protect John's frozen body from the remaining aliens, but there are too many of them and the fire is overwhelming. 
Suddenly John notices Maki is bleeding, and when he returns to reality, her dead body falls to the ground. It turns out Kai had to kill her to rescue John. The relic goes off and the map to Halo disappears, so the Covenant only got to see half of it. Soon the Spartans are overpowered by the aliens and all of them go down except for John, who refuses to leave without both the team and the relics. To avoid freezing when he touches it, John asks Cortana to take over his body. Cortana refuses because she isn't sure she can bring him back, and this allows the warrior leader to hit John, sending him flying. Since he's about to die anyway, Cortana finally accepts to take control of him. With Cortana in charge of such a powerful body, the aliens are quickly killed in seconds. The leader is still standing, but Cortana controls the Spartan ship from afar and uses it to knock the leader down. Then she grabs the relics and escapes with the other Spartans in their ship. Since they don't have first aid kits, they take care of their wounds with fire. Later when Kai checks on John, the body just moves the head, leaving it up to the audience to decide if he's back or not. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.